Hey, welcome everyone. Once again, I'm Dave Rubenstein, Editor-in-Chief of SD Times. Today we have a special SD Times Live presentation. It's called, Do You Know the Secret About How to Map Your Value Stream? And in a moment, we'll reveal that secret. But before we get started, I have a couple of quick housekeeping announcements. Uh, today's session is gonna be followed by a live Q&A. So if you have any questions at any time during the presentation, you can just go to the uh, control panel, go to the questions tab, type in your question, and we'll get to as many at the end as time will allow. Uh, secondly, we're recording today's session, so it will be available on demand uh, for people who want to binge watch it at four o'clock in the morning, watch it over and over again, it'll be there for you. So uh, with me today to uh, dive into this is Lance Knight and Jonathan McGowan of Value Stream Management Software Provider ConnectAll. And they're gonna walk us through the creation of a work process diagram that will allow us to see typical wait times or non-value work and where uh, that process can be uh, improved upon. <clears throat> As we've been reporting in SD Times, organizations are still struggling with the concept of value stream management, how they define their value, how to change their culture to emulate it. Uh, so today's session will cut through all that hand-wringing and show you how to get started creating the visualizations you need to see where the bottlenecks lie and with our big reveal, a preview of ConnectAll's upcoming designer software for creating these important process visualizations. So to get us started, let's bring in Lance and Jonathan. How you doing, hey, guys? Great, how are you, Dave? Great to talk to you again. You know, it's always good to have these webinars with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wish our audience sometimes could see the jokes and humors we have before this uh, webinar, but uh, <laughs> we kind of dive right into these. Yeah. Well, what you know, I'm really looking forward to the most is uh, Jonathan's trombone concerto that will be following the presentation. So absolutely. Be... And, you know, I can't control the clouds behind the sun here either, oh. um, in front of the sun, sorry. Um, you know, I mean, I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. As everybody knows that has been working with me on this, it's this value stream designer. And Jonathan's going to talk about how we've used this designer to hold great workshops with our customers so that they can just get in there and and modify and look at and visualize how their software development is being developed through tools, human endeavors, all that. So it's another solution from ConnectAll to help humans better value manage their value stream. Mm -hmm. um, I put a lot of personal time and effort into this and Jonathan's going to walk you through how we've used it in the past. But the big thing about the designer that we're about to show everybody is we're going to give it to the community. We're going to give it to the people in the value stream management community. It's going to be something free you can have access to. You can pre-register with it at valuestreammanagement.com, and you can save your designs. You can lay it out, and it's just what the community has been working for. And Dave, you and I, I have had some great discussions about how to get started with value stream management. I remember two years ago with me, you, Eric and the late Chris Nowak, when you said, when the biggest question was, how do we get started? And right. Eric, Chris and I were all like, uh, read the books, right? Um, so this is just one step closer to really uh, helping the community visualize, create the visualizations, and really start to manage their software delivery value stream better. And I'm, I'm excited about getting it out and I'm really excited about giving it away. So I, th I think it's going to be great for the community. It's free to use uh, and so on. But we're going to pivot into talking about how Jonathan uses it um, and how he's used it in the past to do value stream management analysis with customers. Uh, and Jonathan is a uh, what I call a single point failure with his knowledge here at ConnectAll uh, and his trombone playing too. So. Um, I'm gonna stop stealing the stage here and let Jonathan kind of take it from here and, and talk about what he's learned and how he's used the designer uh, to help some of our biggest customers visualize and remove waste from how they're developing software. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks, David. Thanks, Lance. Um, unfortunately, we'll have to take a rain check on the on the performance. Uh, <laughs> I did not. Uh, I didn't warm up properly this morning, so you know, you know how that goes. So. Um, I don't want to pick it up cold or anything, but uh, yeah, happy to be here. I'm a solutions architect with ConnectAll, and I work side by side with a lot of customers doing things just like what we'll be talking about today. Um, 
<clears throat> let me go ahead and I'll share my screen here and we'll get started. Um, so uh, if you can see my screen, can you see the, the, yep. uh, the value stream management.com page? Very good. Uh, so what we've got here, uh, as Tim shared the link just a moment ago, uh, this has been out for a little while. You can sign up for our list and you'll land up or you can go to this landing page and sign up for our list and be the first to know whenever it actually makes it out to the public very soon. Uh, but uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and give you a sneak peek on it and uh, we'll actually show you how we walk through, like Lance said, show you how we walk through uh, with our customers uh, and, and help them to, to visualize their value streams and and um, and discover uh, discover the treasure of managing them better. There we go. We got to tie in the theme somehow, right? Um, but let's go ahead and, without further ado, uh, I'll walk through um, just an example of what we've done in the past. And this is a this is what we would end up with uh, after interviewing a customer. Uh, we typically take a very informal approach to this. Uh, I'm very big on just just have a conversation. You know, it all starts with a conversation and just sit down with somebody just like you would with a whiteboard or a piece of pen and paper uh, and um, you know, just say, hey, tell me about your process. You know, tell me where you start. Tell me how things, how work comes in. Tell me your, about your work intake. Tell me, you know, they'll, they'll talk about uh, anything from their, their requirements management to their incident management um, and or they'll, they'll talk about their HR stuff and onboarding things that way. You know, really, multiple different parts of the organization there's um you know people don't always know exactly what the pain is but they can they usually come to us because they they feel something and they want to make it better right you know you go to the doctor because you don't feel great and uh you know you don't know what's wrong but the doctor says well tell me your symptoms and you know i'll tell you what's wrong with you uh usually but uh the same thing here, you know, just a casual conversation. Tell me about your process, you know. So in this case, we would talk. Um, this is a previous example that we did on one of our one of our former one of our other webinars. And uh, um, in this case, you know, Carl is a, a new CIO and he inherited this this department. Was told that his budget's being slashed, uh, his team's being slashed, and uh, and he's got to figure out a way to save money. Well, uh, they're their software is not being developed any faster. It's not getting out the door any faster. And now he's got to do more work, uh, or at least the, at the very minimum, the same amount of work with less resources, right? So he's got to figure out a way to to cut cut all that waste from his value stream. It's a, it's a story that you know we're all familiar with uh, here with um, uh, with software development and, and value stream management. So uh, how can I do more with less, right? Uh, so uh, you know, we build out a process like this. We talk about through every step of the every step of the way uh, how things are flowing, and what we uncover is uh, more often than not is uh, you know we look at this process and we start to uncover these bottlenecks really. And you know we haven't really gotten to the analysis part of it yet, but I can see right here at the very beginning. Uh, if we look right here in the middle in this development process, I can see over here in something like Sonar Cube where we've got vulnerabilities that are automatically found on the code base. Uh, those vulnerabilities live in Sonar Cube. You know, I can see where uh, folks are running their tests. They may be manual tests or automatic tests, but those test results are living in Tosca. They are creating defects and all that stuff's living there. Uh, we have over here on the incident management side, uh, somebody determines that an incident needs to be escalated and fixed, bug found in production. That's coming over here into our backlog too. And so you've got three different sources of defects right here um, uh, in living in three different tools, but the developers working just in JIRA, you know, they have to go to all these different tools, find all this stuff, do this manual copying and pasting uh, or, or all this very disjointed work. So we can see that, that that in and of itself, having to kind of change your mind going from one tool to the next uh, is, is a big slowdown. Uh, we like to pride ourselves as multitaskers, but anytime we have to shift context, of course, from one one scenario or one tool to the next, even if we're very familiar with it, it still takes time to kind of switch over to it, right? right. Um, right. We have to get into that, kind of get in that zone, and when you break out of that zone to go look at and do something administrative, it, it slows you down. 
So, so uh, this, let me let me just ask you and jump in for a second. This is uh, irrespective of what processes you're using. If it's if you're doing mostly manual work or if you're doing waterfall mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily doing DevOps, you still can get the same value out of this. And right. in fact, this could actually even show you, oh, I need to buy a tool that will automate a step here and, and help me gain more value. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's right. Uh, to your first point, yeah, that, that's right. That uh, um, it uh, it is irrespective of anything, of any process. Uh, like, like we like to say, value stream management is human uh, and we all have our own different processes. Uh, we all have our own different ways of doing things. Waterfall is one such process, Agile is another process. And, um, you know, even when we get into things like I mentioned earlier, there's an HR on onboarding process where things like automation can help. Um, how do I automatically create new users and give them the right access to everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, uh, value stream is really everywhere. And, and, it's, and it takes on many different forms uh, because the humans that, that design these value or are using these value streams or creating these value streams are all are all unique and individual too. So they they create these processes uh, based on how they work, right? So every every single one's going to be different, even if the tools look similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's right, Dave. You know, I, I, and I'm I'm well vocal on this. You know, value stream management isn't agile. It's not. Um, it's not DevOps, you know, you don't have to build a community or add it to your scrum or sprints or, uh, you know, write poems about it. It is what it is. It's been around forever. And this solution here helps people get up, map their value stream. This is a tool chain value stream map. You could set up any type of value stream map that you wanted to within here. And you can use this because you can export it, print it out. You can use this to articulate to your own management how work really flows and what tools, methods, and processes you use and show where there's waste that could be removed. So if you're doing agile, if you're doing waterfall, all of that, value stream management doesn't care. You know, I, I think I've said that before, right? Mm -hmm. uh, value stream management cares about managing it. And as my friend Andrew Fuqua likes to say, what value stream management isn't, right? It's not agile. It's not that. It is the method of looking at how things flow and improving them, right? Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting, and I, I think I've said this before too, is this point. Value stream management comes from manufacturing, right? I mean, it was formed in the 50s and 60s, a Toyota production system, right? Lean thinking, all of that stuff I learned in manufacturing. When you walk onto a shop floor and they're doing value stream management, you see it. You actually see it. You see the cells, you see the machines, you see the flow of raw materials, you see the flow of the work orders that go around with all that. When you're doing software development, you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can see people coding. Well, not anymore. Everybody's working from home, so you don't even see them in their cubes, right? So this gives the company and organizations and consultants and people a way, because all the tools are in here under an icon, under that top icon over there, mm -hmm. and all the different things you need, a way for people to say, how do I show the organization what my value stream is? Mm -hmm. This is a very yeah, this is great. high level view. But you can even go deeper and have your multi-sectional value streams as well. If Jonathan, you can zoom way out, you can zoom in. Because mm. you know, I've also said, we've also said value stream isn't linear like this. It's, right? So, yeah. and what did I say? I mean, you got, you got your mainstream and then you've got your channel feeds, right? This, you can map all that out and show the whole company. Look, at here's what happens. Here's an idea that comes in from an initiative that came from Clarity. And I used to hold board conversations to do all this. I could show you some old ones in the past. So this is a way for organizations to quickly and easily map their value stream. There's a list of icons that do different things. You can see Jonathan set some up, different shapes, different lines and types you can draw. And it just very easy, quickly articulate to your organization, how are you managing the development of software? Where do the where does the work come from? Well, 
I bet you most people don't know it might come from clarity. It could come from a, a product that's managing your business outcomes, a GMT hub, or so that way you can see that this initiative came down into this tool and flew over to this, or this person, right down at the bottom, I told Jonathan to call that Mary, Mary collecting data, um, but it's, it's manual reporting, right? So here we're showing that this person, Mary, runs all around these different organizational pieces, collects all that information, and then correlates it and puts a report together. That is total muda, right? I was total waste. Sorry, I went a little lean on you there. Yep. Um, right? So that can be automated or 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 removed, waste can be removed. And, and then the results of that, your executive can see faster, more real time, how I am, whatever. Now, this tool just visualizes that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we have a solution like this out there. Now, I know, you know, people say, oh, there's diagramming tools out there. Yes. Ours is complimentary. It's part of the community. I'm, I'm giving it to the community to use the value stream community because I really want to see it adopted. Uh, and then secondly, I've got all the, we've got all the different tools and things in there that you may be using as well. I'm, I, I, I have to admit, Dave, you know I program some of this. That's why I'm probably more zealot about it than mm. than normal. Um, but it, it's it's really going to help the community. That's why we're giving it to everybody to use. I think one of the points that you made in an earlier conversation we had is that people are doing value stream whether they know it or not. They all mm. have processes, whatever. Something like this, I think, can really help them get a handle on that and they can see, oh yes, we do have a value stream and this is what it looks like and this is how things are working. Where, you know, yes. maybe right now they're doing whiteboards and spreadsheets and somehow trying to put all that together into something coherent. You can print this out, put it on a PDF, show the company how you're doing, put it on a board. It doesn't really matter. But you're absolutely right. Andrew's document said that a while back, what value stream management isn't. It's not anything new. You've been doing it. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And, and to, that, to that too is you don't have to boil the ocean with it, kind of to your comment earlier, is that you can start small. You know, this this kind of shows an end to end uh, or conceptual end to end. You know, it, it would go deeper than this for each individual team that's taking part of this so um right. you know always always say start small you know don't try to fix all the problems just fix the ones you can control and then and then go out yeah. well, right, that's let me, how let we me just, i just want to jump in because we have a question uh from one of our attendees that i think will help us segue nicely uh into where this conversation is going and the question is is there an icon or a way to show on a flow that there's a delay or a bottleneck there and I know that's part of the human part of value stream is being able to take the visualization and the data and make that determination. But is there a way to show that in here? And I think um, we are going to look at some of that in a bit. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so so that, that, that's, that's, sorry, that's the segue to this where at Connect All, when we hold these sessions, we hold these free value stream management sessions. Jonathan's done a bunch of these. He's done really great at them. At the end of it, we take this and we then we generate a report and that report says okay based upon the mapping here are the finding recommendations and impacts right we recommend that you this and then they, we even say here's how you get started with your vsm transformation start by just looking at why that person has to do that right because it's not about just what connect all does but it's about the whole thing right all right when sonar cube gets its variables why why can't that just come right back in or why does that person have to approve that right so you look at maybe improving governance all of that can get mapped out and you can make decisions on that or you can go through here and say all right well based upon your work process you're trying to use tool x that doesn't do what you need to do, possibly you should look at tool Y that has a better agile management system. Or you're trying to use, so you, you could just use this to make all kinds of recommendations to improve flow, improve quality. You know, one time before we had this, I ran a session uh, with a, a large bank software manufacturer I mean, years ago. And I realized that they were doing these two week iterations. And at the end of that, they would two weeks 
DevOps, uh, two weeks of quality as well. But they'd wait till the end of whatever their two weeks of quality check was to report any defects. Mm. So they get together, have this big meeting, and then say, oh, here's the defects we found. Let's get these back to engineering. I'm like, well, why are you doing that? Why don't you just send the defects right back into a backlog or or go key them in over there real time and then you, then you'll be more efficient, right? So it's more than just the tools in here too. It's actually looking at the flow of process as well. Right. right. Um, back to you, Jonathan. Uh, yesterday, I apologized on another call for interrupting you too too much. <laughs> this that that apology still applies for today. It's always all right. So, but yeah, that it's a great segue because what we do with this is, you know, we've identified a lot of manual effort here. You can see there's there's really only one. Uh, I've I've represented this through dotted and and dashed lines and solid lines, uh, but really all of these different lines that are dashed are all manual parts of this process. Really, the only automation that this customer had was between Jenkins and Sonar Cube to automatically kick off that scan on the code base. So what I would do is. Um, like Lance said, is after that after that initial session, I would um, do up a report, uh, make some suggestions, and say, well, here's how you can remove some of that waste. And like I said earlier, you don't have to boil the ocean all at once. You don't have to solve everything. But we can at least see in this scenario <clears throat> where we started to, to uh, uh, introduce some automation to help with some of those scenarios, having those vulnerabilities automatically go back to the backlog. So that the developer doesn't have to go log into Sonar Cube, having the incidents that are uh, that need to be escalated automatically synchronized to the backlog, uh, have the the test defect or the the test defects uh, that uh, that need to be fixed automatically synced to the backlog, and then the developer only has to go one place to see their work rather than going three different places. Uh, the same backlog that's coming over here for their stories, you know, so from from new stuff and broken stuff, it's all, it all gets centralized then into one place just with some of that automation. So, um, and uh, it's all happening, like I said, automatically uh, based off of certain rules, you know, this defect is really a defect, it needs to go over. This defect belongs to a certain group, it needs to go over. That kind of governance can be applied as well. So um, really it's all about, you know, that, like I was saying earlier, breaking that context and having to go do that administrative stuff and, okay, let me go look at the new stuff in service now and get it over here. Uh, that that disrupts my flow. <clears throat> and uh, as a developer, really, really slows down what I really want to be doing, which is writing code. You know, now I only have to go look in one place, go look at my JIRA backlog, find my stuff there, and, and work on that. Um, so that's one, uh, one place that's very, very common. Uh, there are so many places to find defects with all the different tools that we have out there, and centralizing them is a really big, uh, really big uh, place to get started. The other part too is down here, like Lance was saying, it was we have uh, had Mary going into each of these different tools and gathering information from them. You know, uh, LeanKit has its its way of doing things. Jira has its way of displaying things. Uh, you know, all these different applications have their own way of their own reports. And somebody's got to go in and get all those reports, right? We can automate that process too, and with our Connect All Insights, and because we can connect to uh, to so many different applications, really any application with the REST API, we can centralize that data and harvest that data too, and and help this person down here review the data that's come uh, in each tool without having to go so many places and export and massage the data and all that kind of stuff. So we can actually get into something like that over here. Uh, this is centralized. This is an example of some of that centralized data looking across multiple applications. So if I have an initiative that's being managed in Clarity or GTM Hub or something like that, uh, I want to see everything downstream from that initiative. I want to see, I want to see the health of that initiative, the throughput of, of the of the stories and the the bugs of, that have been logged against that initiative. And we can see that here with uh, with common flow metrics, getting things like uh, cycle time and uh, lead time, seeing how many defects have been have escaped for a specific initiative uh, into production, uh, looking at the bottlenecks of the states, you know, looking at the cycle time of each of these states, and it's not just uh, this isn't just a static thing either. As things are changing across the value stream, these things are being updated too, and so I'm able to come in here and, and just on one dashboard. 
take a look and see what my bottlenecks were for a given period of time. This right here is the last 90 days. So I can see, um, I can see my testing right down here. My test um, was a, a 1.3 a 1 week average there in the last 90 days. But I can zoom in here to one specific uh, scenario, one specific uh, um, time frame, and I can see well in this time frame it was actually much worse. So we've gotten better over time, right? <laughs> Uh, so I can actually, as I'm, as you're collecting this data, go in and, and look at this um, uh, uh, through specific time periods. Uh, you know, get ideas about the distribution, how many stories are you working on versus how many bugs you're working on, uh, getting counts like that. So then you can see whether you're spending all your time on new stuff or spending, spending all your time on old stuff, uh, stuff that needs to be fixed. All those are, are uh, all those are symptoms, right? <clears throat> that that you would be taking to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, we're spending a lot of time working. All of our all of our development team is is spending time coding. You know, they're not just sitting around, but we're not getting stuff out the door any faster. We're not we're not improving the way we want to be. Well, taking a look at this and you know, uh, centralizing it all this way and looking at things like your distribution about your your bugs versus your stories versus your tasks versus your other stuff lets you kind of see that breakdown of work and where you're spending all your time. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of what that's about. It's, this, again, is not just one particular uh, tool. This isn't just from JIRA. This would include data from JIRA and ServiceNow and Tosca and, and Clarity and all that stuff would all be pulled into here. And you can use these starter metrics to give you an idea of, of, um, of the, the health of your value stream. And this, I guess, to kind of tie it back is, this is the real treasure here, is, uh, is measuring that value stream and seeing you know, seeing the effectiveness of it, seeing the effectiveness of your your agile transformation, your digital transformations, and uh, and, and um, answering those sorts of questions. So I think I want to be, I want to say something here. We're not giving this to the community. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> uh, <just fun>. So <laughs> uh, this is our product. It's called Connect All Insights. Um, it allows you to capture data from all of your systems and generate rich reports like this, no matter what tool you have, because we have uh, a universal adapter to connect. But this is the outcome he's trying to relate from automating, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so after you've laid out your value stream, you can see that and you realize that you've laid out your present state, and you laid out your future state, you may want to consider something like ConnectAll to help do a lot of that automation. You know, Dave, at ConnectAll, we always say we help companies become more predictable, and this right. is how. And we also say key things, right? Value stream management is a, something that allows you to see, measure, and automate. So here, this is the C part, and we're making that complementary, mm -hmm. right? Measure and automate piece, that's part of getting connect all. But this I want to give to the community so that they can see their value stream. They can map out their present state, and they can map out their future state in a very easy, automated way. And in that, maybe Connect All will be interested to you further past that. If not, that's fine too. Uh, and you also may learn through this that you need a, a different type of tool. Like maybe you need a different value stream management tool in this. Like maybe Platora would fit better uh, in here for what they do. Or, you know, in here, ServiceNow as well. I mean, all of this kind of comes together. And most of the VSM tools, it's an interesting point. Most of us, we don't really compete. We kind of compete, but we really don't. We do different things in the value stream. And the other thing, thing about tools and value stream is everybody's value stream lately, if you haven't noticed. So um, everybody's jumping into that space. But this is this is really designed to let the, the people and organizations who are tasked with looking into improving software delivery, a way to map their present state and their future state, and then use that to look for bottlenecks and report on those, right? Until you start having these conversations, you don't kind of see them. In another whiteboarding session I had a long time ago, uh, we realized that they were making these big packages of documents, which had all the requirements of full spec, and then dropping on that the lap of the lap of the development team. And then they would have to go divide up the work. And we're like, well, why are you doing that, right? Why don't we convert to more of a product kind of mindset where you're continually iteration, get a minimum viable out, go from there. So many things that um, 
you can start to see when you lay these out. And then when you start asking the right questions, uh, because you've had some of the some of the other knowledge, this lets you visualize the results of those questions you ask for your for your clients, your customers, for the company you're with, and so on. Mm -hmm. I would just like to take this time now to remind people if they have any questions that now is a good time to submit those. And as I said, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, so one point I want to kind of circle back to for people uh, who have, uh, you know, in our experience, we've, you know, produced, uh, you know, a few uh, value stream conferences and we have a lot of discussions with uh, a lot of people on the topic. And again, the, the big question they had was, well, how do we get started doing that? And I really think that this is a great uh, first step for them to just map it out, see what you have, see what your process looks like, and then you can make all the decisions that you need to going forward from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so we also, so another piece to that, as you're thinking about that, is we have uh, partners that are using this to help their clients map things out. Um, we'd be happy if people wanted to have some time with maybe Jonathan to help them map it out. It's all the, it's all part of the, building the community around value stream that we're trying to support with this. Um, and, uh, you know, to go back to that icon question, I forgot, Jonathan, if you open the icon palette, you'll see that there's a whole, those are the tool palettes, the application palette. There's another palette below. Right. The and there's icons. a whole a whole library of icons that you can use to represent all kinds of things. There's the flow icons in there and, and all of that to kind of do it. And then the colors and shapes and stuff. But that's more of the details of the capabilities of this. Uh, and there's an export and an import. So you can export it, import it. You can create a PDF, you can create an SVG, an image, and all of this can be used to do all kinds of different things um, for your value stream stuff. Uh, and you can make as many as you want, diagrams for different things and so on. And I, I'm open to, you know, we're absolutely open to uh, enhancement requests and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's an easy way. I mean, I, I don't have to go make a subscription. I don't have to download all the icons. I don't have to do all. It's all right here where I can then do, I can draw the lines, connect them, choose my arrowheads, do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I can go. And so the other thing, remember, Dave, you were talking about this, me and you were talking about this before, about everybody saying, well, in order to do value stream management, you have to build a value stream culture and do all. Well, you know, some of that is true, but value stream management really is about looking at processes and methods and having a flow, finding waste and removing it. And then the management part is starting all over again, right? And, and keep looking at how information is flowing through your value stream. How do I get ideas in? How do they get to code and production? Um, and then looking where to remove waste, automate, just really following those lean and systems thinking principles. Mm -hmm. Of which right. I can pontificate for hours about, as you already know. <laughs> I've heard it all. That's right. You have heard <laughs> it all. So um, I see we have no further questions. So I would just kind of throw it out to you guys, uh, maybe 30 seconds each, uh, Jonathan and Lance, uh, you know, your takeaway, if, if people leave here with one thought today, uh, you know, what should that be? Lance, why don't we start with you? Uh, Valuestreammanagement.com, it's, um, it's complimentary, use it as you will, uh, lay out your value stream, uh, and then I think the other thing that I'd like to leave is just just get it and lay it out. Just do it. Tell everybody how your information is flowing. Mm -hmm. show, show everybody. Don't worry about consensus or community, right? Just give an idea. If it's wrong when you start, somebody will correct you along that process. Right. Right. And then you'll start to then you'll start to flow with things. Oh no, we do it this way. Oh, okay. Right. Then you'll get started with that. So, you know, let's, it's just a great solution to help you improve your value stream uh, and become more predictable. Okay, great. Jonathan? Yeah, and, and to kind of piggyback on that a little bit, I mean, I've, I've talked with all number of, uh, all manner of people when uh, sitting down to do this. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a manager, sometimes it's, uh, uh, sometimes it's the VP, sometimes it's a developer. You know, again, it's somebody who just feels that there's something, 
something they could be doing better. You know, they feel like they've got a problem, but they're not quite sure where. And usually by the time we're done with our conversation, just by visualizing, you know, they've they've you know, they've already got that light bulb on to say, wow, we're spending a lot of time testing, you know, and, and we haven't even started to measure that yet, but they've seen that they've that they're doing all that manually. They haven't adopted anything like like automated testing yet. And you know, that's a big uh, you know, big indicator. Well, that could save us a lot of time. So yeah, it doesn't require any special skills. Just sit down and do it. You know, just you know, um, even if you don't know what the problem is yet, just start jotting stuff down, and you'll come across it. Mm -hmm. As I wrote in my article for Forbes, stop shuffling papers. Just lay it out. Yeah. Right. Well, it appears that we have uh, actually a late question that just came in that I think we can tackle because I think it's a good one. Uh, so I'll just throw it out there and uh, maybe um, uh, Lance, you could probably start with the answer and Jonathan can follow up with anything. So the question is, when discussing value stream mapping and measuring flow, I often hear the need to quantify the intangible or you need to be able to measure anything. Can you provide a success story or an example that was hard to quantify and what capabilities your program has for this? Okay. So let me digest that a little bit, that question. Yeah. When mapping a value stream is quantifying the intangible. Well, that's a tough one because there are intangibles all over the place in software development and delivery. Um, and some of those things you just can't measure right now. You can measure most everything um in a process of trying to understand how long takes something takes to do it and if you're removing waste that intangible remove of waste will be noticed but that's a really great question because here's the thing how do you know the effect because this falls back to when i talked about value trumps flow you remember that last year mm -hmm. This is where if I remove that intangible and if at the altar of improving flow, what is the intangible effect I have? And that could have been lower quality, right? So, and those things are hard to really quantify and do you wanna risk quantifying that in an experiment? Um, however, that's an excellent question. Sorry, I don't have just a bang answer for you, except for um, if you measure a process, those intangibles do take time and you'll improve flow. Mm -hmm. but I would be very cautious of risking value at that. So value trumps flow. Um, this solution you're looking at here that Jonathan's showing us is only a visualization and mapping solution. You can put something there to visualize showing that, um, but it's not going to solve that. This just this is just a mapping tool and solution. I hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'll ask uh, is: Is there a way for our attendees who might want to engage you in discussions of what we've been talking about today? How can they get in touch with you? Uh, so, you know, it's connectall.com. Also, um, you can go sign up for pre-early access to this at valuestreammanagement.com. Uh, just all kinds of ways through those two venues to get a hold of us and, and reach right out to me. You can reach me. I'm L Knight, Lance Knight, or L Knight at connectall.com. He's Jay McGowan at connectall.com. Um, you're David Rubstein, but not at connectall. But yes, that's at least how you can reach out to us. Absolutely. And we'd be happy to talk to you about this question or any other question you have about it uh, and how to look at uh, managing your value streams. Excellent. All right. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, Lance Knight and Jonathan McGowan of ConnectAll for the uh, presentation today. And I think, uh, as we've said a couple of times, is a great, uh, great onboarding step for people who are dipping their toe in the value stream waters and want to actually take that first step to seeing what their processes look like and where where uh, bottlenecks may lie. Of course, we want to thank Connect All itself for uh, sponsoring today's event. And I certainly would like to thank all of our attendees for uh, hanging in there with us today. 
I know you have a lot of options to uh, learn these types of things, and we're very glad that you uh, spent some time with us today. So until next time, I'm Dave Rubenstein, Editor-in-Chief of SD Times. So long for now. Thanks, fellas. <laughs>